yo, what's up with it? I'm Sharpless. Today, I'll be raiding all of the enemies, another one. Every single one of them. So over here, I've got um, the list, all their staff and everything. We're going to be doing this alphabetically in order style. So let's start off with Yield Reliable Alarm Ghost. These guys are super freaking annoying. Don't alarm the ghost he has friends. No shit, he has friends. When this guy spawns, I'm pretty sure you can only fight him in the ghost house where the fourth melody is. And um, when this uh, guy spawns, he always spawns in the center of the battlefield. And he'll bring in a bunch of dudes. I think he brings in like like this guy and like... Who else? Maybe a bio bat or something. Just so annoying though. You want to kill him as like instantly, like turn one, snipe him, because if he uh, calls his friends, it's so annoying. Um, yeah, I guess we'll leave this guy in here. He's a, uh, oh, whatever. The he's a specific gang zombie. I'll probably have all the recolors in the same. So this is the alligator. Um, alligator's pretty chill. He's encountered in the zoo, and he usually does big damage. But alligators, I don't know if there's like a luck stat in this game or what, but like, for some reason I feel like alligators get crit a lot, and they they crit Nintem a lot too. Like, they have a very high crit rate ratio relative to other... That's what I've seen in my experience, but that's probably not even true. Uh, they have low HP, 30 HP is really good. Uh, that's usually pretty easy to kill, and they have low defense too, but the issue is they hit hard, so they're like a glass cannon. Pretty chill though, I like I like alligators, their sprites are funny looking. Alright, now we got the armor. These guys appear in the ghost house. These guys are also chill, I feel like I'm gonna put a lot of enemies in chill, but there's a lot of not chill enemies, so probably not. Uh, the armor has a lot of defense, it's hard to hit them, but they go down to magic, and they usually use some pretty shitty magic, so they're not that scary. Uh, but they can be scary if you're trying to physically attack them. They're similar to the, uh, the robots like Jane and Nancy and Susie. Uh, I believe they also spawn in the ghost house, like the alarm ghost. I don't know where else they spawn, though. Alright, next we got the bag lady. Bag Lady is ideal. So goaded. I can't, like, it's Sprite. I can't do the Sprite justice because it's cut off here, too. But just look at that mouth. This mouth is all you need to know about the Bag Lady. And obviously she's dual-wielding, double-posted-up bags, ready to swing with both hands. 30 Wisdom. Like, what do you do against that? Item Hamburger? Not a lot of enemies drop hamburgers. A couple do, but the ones that do, ideal. Super ideal enemies. We almost tried to route in um, a manipulation to kill the bag lady because this enemy encounter is so ideal, but it didn't end up happening. Because the, the way we were going to route it is, uh, it's interesting. Not a lot of people know about this, but Mother 1 has like a hidden peninsula of power. Um, uh, like outside of the first town and a peninsula of power is a little like two or one ch uh, tile section where you can encounter enemies in a way later area of the game super early uh it, it, there's a really famous one in the first final fantasy game where you can just fight these super high level enemies super early and then like hyper grind off them and uh we we wanted to get this bag lady going on the Mother One Peninsula of Power, which is on the right side of the town, the first town, to the right of some cops. All right, but anyways, next we got the Barbot. Barbot's super chill. Um, they use PK Beam Gamma a lot, and then that doesn't matter because you reflect it, but then they're immune to it too, which can be annoying, but it's really not super annoying. It's kind of just chill because it's just a super dead turn. And yeah, 60 HP at that at their point in the game is pretty low, so that's uh, they're not hard to take out. Usually you can one-shot them if you're a high enough level. Alright, um, BB Gang boss is a auto-scroller boss, which is... This is where you fight Teddy in the live house, and you have to fight him only as Nintendo, 
And after, like, three turns of doing, like, five damage, nothing happens, and he kicks Lloyd out of the party, and then... But it's a super boring fight in reality. It's the same every time. Like, nothing... You can never crit. Nothing fun ever happens. Uh, these guys are ideal. BB Gang, the minions. I like these guys. They got nerfed because their cigarette was too bad. But they drop flameflowers, um, and they're, like, everywhere. In the town of LA, before you recruit Teddy, like, a lot of the people you talk to are just these guys, and you just fight them. And you can just, like, save in the town of LA, and then just go and fight them, and, like, keep doing that until you get a bunch of flamethrowers, and then you can give Lloyd a bunch of flamethrowers. Or you could sell the flamethrowers, if that's your thing. Um, but yeah, they're just really, they're chill guys to fight on repeat. Very chill. Very ideal. They're, 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 they're a combination of both. Alright, the bear... I like the bear. Um, someone ate his porridge and he isn't too happy about it. Pretty chill. He, uh, the bear can hit hard, but he's only got 80 HP. And um, the real shit is that he gives $250. $250? You fight the bear, like, before getting Lloyd when you're going to a uh, little sweet factory or you could fight the lloyd before or bleh, or you could fight the bear before lloyd or after lloyd before duncan's there's a lot of places you can counter the chill bear and he's very chill very average all right bigfoot surprised um i don't know about bigfoot he's definitely not worthless he's very annoying that's for sure he's got um 90 defense 90 hp which is really rough Sometimes, uh, if you're trying to recruit Anna early and you're super low level, you could just get walled by this guy, because you can just, like, not escape, and, um, he just has 90 defense. But I don't think he's super annoying. I think the pack of Fort Wolves is probably more annoying. I think he's chill. He's as chill as the bear, to be honest. This guy is super annoying. Big Wooda. Yeah. Could you fight a run? The answer is run every time. I don't remember the last time I fought this guy because this guy is so super annoying it's not even funny. He can drop the noble seed, but every time you kill him he blows up. And if you have a level 1 party member, if you have a Lloyd or an Anna or a flying man in your party and you kill this guy, then that character is going to take significant damage, probably critical damage, probably lethal damage, just from him blowing up. Uh, it's really smart for characters like this and the robots, a lot of characters that do this, um, to get either the C pendant or the H2O pendant. The H2O pendant, you can buy in Magicant, and that's, I usually get the H2O pendant for my level 1 characters, because they, it's just like, these guys are so annoying, it's, I can't, super annoying, but generally I just don't fight them. Like, anything that's super annoying is stuff that I actively run away from turn one as fast as possible uh ideal fights i usually fight and chill fights i usually fight worthless fights i also usually just run away or it's usually so worthless that i get stuck in the fight or something all right bionic bat yeah these guys are um worthless actually i don't know i, I think i'll put them in super annoying uh they seem like they're chill but in reality uh, you can see right here, it says, beware of stone of origin. That means they're not chill. Anything that can stone you is basically just one-shot killing you. Because you have to use a crazy high-level healing spell to heal it. And it's just like, if it if he does it on Nintendo, 10, it's over. If he does it on... You could just encounter two or three of them, and they could all just do it on turn one and turn two. They could just use stone of origin every turn. So it's super annoying. Like, you gotta just revive yourself, or just get out of that fight instantly. Uh, and, like, they're, since they're bats, they don't give a lot of money. They don't have high HP, but it's not worth it to try to fight them, because they could just stone you and kill you. Alright, Biopedes, uh, basically worthless. At this point in the game, you're fighting Biopedes after killing Junior, and they're giving you $14, and they're probably good just poisoning you, and they have, like, no HP. They're just worthless. No experience, just not not worth the time at all. Uh, Poison Scorpion, gonna put him in the Bio Scorpion, actually. Gonna put him in the same, same, same thing I said for these Bio Bats. It's the same thing for the Scorpions, but 
Uh, they can also just poison you. So if they wanted to really troll you, they can just poison you and uh, stab your HP with poison and then Stone of Origin you and kill you anyways. But at least these guys give you some more money than the, the uh, bats do. And experience. Alright, the bison. Um, I don't know about the bison. These guys are kind of chill. These are the, like, green ones. I don't often... These guys are, like, before LA, I think. Where are the other bison? Yeah, I don't know. These guys are chill. They, they're, like, physical enemies. They hit hard, but they have high defense, high HP. But um, at this point in the game, when you're fighting these bison, you probably have Anna, who's destroying things with magic. Or... You probably have Teddy. And Teddy can deal with these guys in two hits. Alright, Blue Starman. I love Blue Starman. They are very annoying, but they are super ideal. I don't know why, I just love Starman. Um, but these guys... they're The reason I put them in ideal is because they're one of the enemies that... Um, can use PK Beam Gamma and are not weak to PK Beam Gamma. So when they use PK Beam Gamma and... Uh, do it on Nintendo, then they just kill themselves with it. But now that I think about it, I don't remember the last time a Blue Starman has really done that to me. Maybe they only have uh, Beta and Alpha. But even if that's the case, if they only have PK Beam, Beta, and Alpha, then they're pretty weak enemies. If they have Gamma, they're ideal. But if they're <laughs> if they only have those two, then they're just like 100 HP. They get one shot by Teddy or two shot. Um. And yeah, if Anna's a high level, Nintendo's a high level, these guys are one shots. So they're super ideal. I love the Starman. I think they have really great designs. And for some reason, I like the blue ones a lot because the blue ones you only encounter in the caves. And they it's either the blue Starman or Brain. And like the blue Starman are ideal compared to Brains. Brains are super annoying. I'll get to them later though. Uh, Bomber. Bombers are pretty annoying. Shaped like an egg. These ones are kind of chill, though, because these ones have really low HP. These are, the, like, the Duncan Factory bombers, and they're... Eh, no, we'll put them in super annoying. Because if you're going through Duncan's Factory with a level 1 Lloyd, this bomber is going to be super annoying, because he can hit all party and just one-shot Lloyd if he's level 1. Uh, the Buffalo. This is what I was thinking of when I was thinking of the Bison. Alright, let's compare these two. Buffalo and Bison... Bison has more HP and is far stronger. But the Buffalo is very similar in defense. Gives slightly less money. But yeah, these guys are chill. They're just like beefy. High HP, high defense, but bold to magic. Alright, Centipede, absolutely worthless. One dollar, one experience. Even when you're level 1, which is impossible to fight these guys at level 1. But even if you were level 1, they would still be worthless. Alright, Brain the Cerebrum. Uh, these guys are super annoying. Because, like I said before, when you're going through Etoy Caves, you're either fighting these guys or you're fighting these guys. And you want these guys. Because these guys suck. These guys have 280 defense. Like, Teddy is not even getting close to penetrating that. So all you do from these guys is run away turn one. The bomber, uh, yeah, I I think I would leave him in super annoying. Because if you have a level one Lloyd, you're running away from that turn one. If if your Lloyd's leveled up, you you probably have a really high level in ten, and he's probably one shotting it. And in that case, it's pretty chill. But if you if you're not running that, then he's super annoying. Um, Cerebrums, though, just super, super annoying. They only give $80, which is not even a lot for how much defense they have. Is such a pain. Alright, the Lynx Cougar. Quite different than a pet cat. Um, these guys are chill. They usually spawn in with a skunk, and they're super chill. Um... Rockadile, we'll put them in the chill as well. They uh they're just physical enemies, they're just leveled up. I'll put them put him next to his friend. He's just a leveled up version of this. He's he hits hard, but he doesn't have a lot of HP. He does have a lot of defense, but it's whatever. 
All right, crows, super annoying. Only give $4, and they're the first enemy you can encounter that can steal your food items. And that is not okay. When they steal your food items, that is so lame. Especially your bread. If you want your bread for teleporting, not even for eating, then he steals it because he wants to eat it. All right, Dad's Eyes, super chill enemies. Um, these guys can hit hard, but usually they don't, and they drop a lot of money for the level, for, like, early Magicant. They're good to grind on. They're good for leveling up. Doll is an auto-scroller boss fight. I don't think it's possible to lose to the doll, and it's just, like, level one easy fight. Kind of worthless. All right, we can, now we got the dragon. The dragon is not an auto-scroller boss fight. The dragon is super annoying. Um, he does give the sixth melody, but um, ideally, when you're fighting the dragon, you're using the rope with Ninten turn one, and then Lloyd is throwing a super bomb at it, and that setup will always kill the dragon turn one, always. The only way it doesn't is if the dragon outspeeds both Lloyd and Ninten, and the dragon chooses to specifically target Lloyd and, like, physically attack Lloyd. If that happens, like, before the rope goes off, then Lloyd dies, and it's 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 cut. But that's kind of uncommon, and uh, normally the dragon uses magic attacks, which are very chill. And if Lloyd has the C pendant, then Lloyd will always survive a turn from a magic attack. So the dragon, he's very annoying. If you're fighting him not like that, he's super annoying. Just look at these stats and everything. But honestly, he's kind of chill. He's kind of an auto-scroller now that I really think about it. It is a boss, but like, if you're doing all melodies uh, and you're fighting the dragon without Lloyd, you do have to use like four spells and it's a really hard boss fight. But that's like the only situation where this is hard. Like, the dragon is super easy and basically every scenario if your ninten is higher than like the dragon is easy when ninten is solo level 25 that's only when it gets kind of hard but if you have a level one lloyd the dragon is a joke no matter what level ninten is and if ninten is higher than level 25 then the dragon is also a joke so kind of an auto scroller to be honest all right dr distorto very chill um they're very easy to run away from he usually single targets these guys like to run away too so i, I don't mind dr distorto the dust balls are annoying though i don't know why i think they use fire i think they like give you cold i don't i don't know what these guys I haven't fallen in a long time but i remember them being annoying all right the eagles are also very annoying these guys have it's like their stats don't do them justice but when you encounter a set of two or three of these and you don't have Lloyd yet, or you have a level 1 Lloyd, it's very, very hard to deal with them, because they just outspeed one shot, do 30 damage in one turn. Very difficult. But once you get over the hump, they're kind of a joke enemy. Once you're a high level, these guys are a nothing. Uh, the elephant is... Hmm, I don't know where to put the elephant. They're kind of ideal. I say this because we go from level 4 to level 5 because of an, we kill an elephant at level 4 in the speedrun. Uh, but they have very high... They do have very high defense. Actually, 34 is not that high, but for for this point of the game, they're very high, hard enemy to kill. I'll put them at ideal because the elephant has 100. They give you $100 when you kill them, which is very good. That's more than Starman Jr. That's more than most enemies. So I like the elephant. These guys are super annoying. They explode when they blow up. Not cool. I'm going to put all the robots there. Where's the other ones? Ah, here they are. All of these guys explode when they blow up. They're all super annoying. It's just no reason to fight them. Just run away. All right, fireball also super annoying. Um, you generally don't want to be fighting a fireball when you're going through Duncan's factory with a level one Lloyd. Uh, they are just going to use PK fire twice and kill him in two turns, even if he's guarding and you're just like, okay. Um, so yeah, I always run from them. They are easy to kill. 58 HP is really low, but, um, yeah, I generally don't like to fight them unless my Nintendo is a super high level already. All right. The fish, I hate the fish with a passion. 
it's uh it only has 65 hp but 60 defense is high and it hits twice basically every time it attacks it swings twice in, per turn which is super annoying um if you're a low level the setup to beating the fish is to get some defense items and then to use defense up and then to just heal when you're low and attack it I hated fighting the fish though, so I routed out the fish very early on when I learned the glitchless speedrun for this game. Because I hate the fish fights so much. Alright, flies are worthless. They're like 10 HP, $1 as worthless as centipedes. Four eyes? Um, I don't know about the four eyes. They're pretty chill. I think all the eyes are chill except for the mom's eyes. Um, like this guy's. Usually a two shot to kill or one shot. He's not that bad. He doesn't give that much money, but he doesn't really hit hard. Alright, the fugitive. The fugitive usually spawns with the rope. Um he can be found on the FBI's most wanted list. Fugitive, uh is pretty chill. The rope is not chill. Where's the rope? We're gonna put him in super annoying. I I don't like the rope fight. But once you kill the... Actually, no. Nah, I'll put them both in chill, actually. The rope can tie you up. And, like, that could... These two could just destroy you if you get tied up. But the rope has very low HP. And then once you kill the rope, this guy's very chill to fight. So, honestly, these guys are both chill. Alright, Gabalion. I like the Gabalion. I don't know why. Something about its design or something. They have a lot of defense. But 100 HP really isn't that much. And... I don't know, I like these guys. Ideal. Right, gang zombie, super annoying. When you're when you're doing the graveyard, I don't know. Gang zombie can they can give you some good money. $32 is pretty good for the graveyard. But I think they're just annoying. They have a lot of HP. They got nerfed, their sprite got nerfed, and they're just like rough. Uh gargoyle, super annoying tier. I'm gonna put the other gargoyle there too. These guys suck. They just like one shot you, just destroy PK freeze uh Omega. These guys have freeze Omega. These guys aren't as bad, and usually they're solo fights. But when you get into a triple stack of these guys, it's so over. But you can also get triples of these. These guys just suck. Not a fan. Oh, normal ghost is chill. They usually just run away from you. They don't do that much damage. They have very low HP. They can be annoying if you're trying to run away from them and they're trying to run away from you and everyone's failing that's usually not fun Guy. auto scroller boss tier very easy to kill if you have a level 13 and 10 very easy to kill if you have a level 18 teddy and a level 4 anna and yeah lloyd's always worthless during this fight yeah ideally uh you've got PSI shield, you've got quick up, you've got eight medicines, and you've got 120 max HP. And that's the entire setup you need. You go into the guy fight, you use shield turn one, you uh, use quick up turn two, you use quick up turn three, and then you guard turn four, and then you heal with the medicine. And then you guard four times, heal with the medicine again, and then sting twice, medicine once, four times, and then sting three more times, and you're done. The entire fight i've done it many many a times i've but it's recently changed to where we to be slightly faster than that but that's what the average setup used to look like for me consistent 100 percent setup regardless of any rng all right uh borg giga borg and mega borg i like these guys they have pk beam they're not ideal because they they're like barbots where they are resistant to pk beam but uh, they're when they get one shot by Eve, they give you a bunch of stuff and they give you a laser beam, so they're chill. Gorillas are chill as well. Actually, gorilla is almost ideal to be honest. When you're in the zoo, you want to be fighting like if you can kill a gorilla or a, or an elephant, you're like in really good shape in the zoo because they they are annoying at where they can steal items from you, but um. They also have 40 HP, which is really low, and give $50, which is really good. And they don't hit hard. When they attack you, they're not hitting hard. So I think they're ideal. The only not ideal part about them is that they can steal. But that's, like, that's a very small. All right. Uh, grizzly bear. 
Grizzly Bear, at the very, very highest level of the Game Boy Advance version, is super ideal. Secretly the most ideal fight. But in reality, there's a super, super annoying enemy. The Grizzly Bear um, has this final desperation attack where it just does like 200 damage to you regardless of what level you are or anything. So uh, that's not cool. The reason why I, it's ideal for GBA speedruns is because we utilize this to survive one of those attacks because we know how much damage it's going to do and then um, get its experience. And then we also learn a spell off of him. And we also use him to align the RNG for the Geig fight. So it's super ideal to fight one of these guys because it's so fast. But in reality, in casual, when you're not manipulating RNG, it's like by far the most annoying fight. Like every time you kill him, he takes one of your party members down with you without fail. It is so annoying. All right, these guys are the guys who spawn from the alarm ghost. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll just put him with his younger brother they're pretty annoying when they get spawned in from the alarm ghost um and then bonus swoosh swoosh slash groucho these guys are awesome they're one of the only enemies that give you more experience when they use an action in combat instead of you killing it and when they use this action they run away from you and give you more experience than what you would have gotten if you killed it if you just kill one of these guys you get three experience but if they greet you politely and walk away, they can give you so much more experience. So you really want that. All right, now we got the hippie. Hippie super ideal fight. I love the hippie. Hippie gives you thirty five dollars for the first first encounter zone of the game, other than the rat basement. Speaking of that, let's just do the rats right fast. Where is the rats? Rats are worthless. They the rats have value when um you're level two and you're grinding to level three safely but they give like three dollars and they're just worthless worthless enemies uh meanwhile the hippies are not worthless we create entire manipulation strings just to get as many hippies as possible because the hippies give you so much money for uh, what point in the game you're in and they only have 25 hp which isn't that bad they also have an action in battle uh that can raise an intense attack if you get good luck if you get bad luck it can lower your attack but um like when you're rng manipulating the early game you you get these fights where the hippie raises your attack and you're like level two and then you like one shot it so it's really awesome hyenas super annoying fight these guys run away from you they don't give a lot of experience they you could get these super long three hyena fights that go on for eight turns, and then one of them just randomly runs away, and you lose all the experience. So they're really not ideal to fight. You just want to be running away from these guys because they're going to run away from you, so might as well. Um, Juana and Kelly might as well do all the robots. These are all super annoying. These guys are, are girls or robots or whatever they are. They're, um... They're not most fun to fight where is the there she is these these ones uh 150 defense 250 defense this is the third tier highest level one i think this is the second one i think the blue one is the first one nancy yeah nancy is the first one uh, no i think kelly is the first one actually i don't even know where you encounter them but they're all super annoying you just like similar to the brain you just like can't you can't fight them if you fight them you like like, like you can't physically attack them like they just destroy you the, you do no damage and they have an ability that just ups their um defense by like an extra 100 just in case if your 10 damage wasn't enough now you're definitely doing one damage but these ones i i kind of like these ones uh th there's a lot of lore with these ones but um these ones are ideal. Fighting them solo is very ideal. Oh, you can't even... There we go. Fighting these ones solo is very ideal because um, they can drop PSI stones and like Eve one-shots them. But what brings them down to super annoying and not super ideal is because sometimes you can encounter these fights with an atomic robot, atomic robot next to it. And even if you have Eve... If you have Eve attack the robot turn one, or, I mean, you don't, you can't control it. But if Eve decides to attack this robot turn one, and you're fighting these two, this robot will blow up. 
and do like 40 or 30 or 60 damage to, to Ninten. And then on the same turn one, this Wana decides to also attack Ninten. You're so cooked. You're going to take 200 and something damage turn one, and it's actually impossible to live because of Eve. If Eve chose to kill the Juana turn one, then the Juana would die, and this robot wouldn't blow up because it's still alive, and then you would take no damage. So this, this, when you encounter these two fights, you can either be taking 250 damage or zero damage, and it's like a coin flip. So it's just so, so annoying. Even with Eve, it's just super annoying. So we're going to leave all those there. Lamp time. The lamp is also an earth, a worthless auto-scroller boss. Actually, we'll leave it in worthless, because you can fight two of them. It's not actually an auto-scroller boss, but they literally don't give money, and they give one experience. But you do have to fight one, but that's kind of what makes it worthless, is because you're forced to fight it, and you have no option. Alright, last Starman. These guys are these guys are the cream of the crop when it comes to ideal. These guys are hyper S tier ideal. I'm definitely not rating these tiers like in order within themselves at all, but um last Starman are the most ideal. They give you so much money, so much experience. When you fight four of them in one battle, it's this times four, and you're just like, yes. And they can give you a PSI stone. So these the Starmen are super ideal. They can kill themselves with the Franklin badge. So you can kill a set of four of them at with a level two Nintendo and no one else if they all choose to just use PK Beam Gamma. So yeah, these guys are the most ideal of the enemies in this game. All right, next we got the UFO. UFO is pretty chill. I like these guys. They don't hit hard. They uh, they're nice. They usually spawn in with the Barbot. But they're not weak to beam gamma, so you can use that on them if you want to. Uh, but they don't give a lot of money, but they also don't have a lot of HP. 32 HP is like nothing. You can encounter them pretty early. So I like them. They're just like chill little UFO dudes. Alright, Lone Wolf. The so Lone Wolf is pretty annoying. It is chill. Because he's by himself. And he's in Snowman by himself. Actually, that's so chill. I gotta, I gotta put him in chill. Because if you, if you have Anna with a high damaging spell, you can just instantly one-shot it, and you get 100 experience, which is awesome. But when you're fighting four of them, that's when it gets annoying. The other thing is that when you're fighting four of them, they're individually so much weaker than the single lone wolf. When you get it down to a lone wolf, it is very strong. Alright. Oh my god, it's automobile time. I'm gonna put all of these in super annoying just because of asthma. This guy, this guy, where where are they? This guy. There's one singular reason why these are all super annoying, and it's just because Ninten is grossly weak to asthma. Uh, I feel like I'm missing one. No, actually, I think that's all of them. Unless there's a devil car. I don't think so. But yeah, all these guys. Be careful, asthma. No one is in the driver's seat. They don't give a lot of money. They're very hard to fight. If you get asthma, it's just a, instantly you're dead. There's no you can't even escape. You should be so done. The trucks are horrible. The trucks and the cars not ideal. I always run away from them if I can. They're easier to fight in Earthbound. All right, uh, Magic Snail. These guys are kind to chill, but they also have extremely highly skewed defense, similar to. Uh, Let's let's group up all the high defense motherfuckers. This the robots and the brain. Yeah. These guys these guys are annoying for their spells. Because guys have their individual annoying qualities. But yeah. These two and these three all super annoying because of their Super high defense. All three of these boards would be down here if not for Eve, but since Eve exists. Um, Mom's Eye is super annoying. Unlike all of the other eyeball enemies, even these guys are these guys are the most ideal actually because they're stupid weak, the normal swoosh. But the eyes are, are horrible because um, they swing twice in each turn and when you encounter a family of them, these are the ones you're targeting first. You're killing this one on turn one, otherwise you will die turn two solely to the mom's eyes. 
so we don't want those. Alright, these mooks also go against super annoying. They're in the stone category of super annoying. They hit when you encounter three of these and they use the stone on you, it's just party wipe, you're done. Uh the normal graveyard bats are very chill. I like these guys. Um Yeah. Various PSI attacks. Yeah, you you don't want to be fighting these guys. I always run from these guys in the swamp. You fight them in the swamp and you, you don't want to be taking these guys in the swamp. Forty two dollars, you know. When the mom's eyes gives you 34, why would you be fighting these guys for $42? Like, it's so illogical. Um, but yeah, I like Mr. Bat. He's uh, got the good song, and he, he usually dies in one or two shots. Doesn't hit hard. Usually annoying when you fight, like, five of them, but they're pretty average enemies. Their, their brother bats are way worse. Alright, we covered Nancy and Nasty Zombie, so now we got the Mook. Um, so these guys I'm going to put in Ideal. The reason why I like I like these mooks is because um that's a little better. Um alright, perfect. So yeah, I like these mooks because when you get to the lake with Eve, you're getting to Eve and you need Lloyd to be alive to level up not to level up to not level up you need lloyd to be alive to to, uh, to fix the boat to get eve so you you healed lloyd at the healer house and now you fix the boat and now you have eve and lloyd is level one because you're playing the game optimally and lloyd is useless so why would you level him up so lloyd is currently level one and you don't want lloyd to be alive after you get eve because lloyd is going steal all the experience from the experience that Nintendo wants to get to level 25. So what happens? What do you do? How do you how do you keep Lloyd from getting experience? The only enemy you can in, you can fight in the entire lake area surrounding the lake where you get Eve is this fight. This O oh, Mook, senior Mook. And when you encounter one of them, it's a death sentence because that means Lloyd is definitely going to get something, some experience, because Eve is going to outspeed and one-shot it. But if you encounter two or three of these mooks, the odds are one of them is going to use a uh, PK fire. This These guys, like, all they use is PK fire, like, the different variants of PK fire, which attacks every party member, which means Lloyd is definitely going to take damage, like... These guys are very likely to, when they attack, attack the whole party, and then Ten's guarding, so he's going to live. And Lloyd is not guarding, and he's going to take a bunch of damage and die. So when you get into that first fight off of Mount Etoy, it's always with these guys, and these guys are always killing Lloyd, turn one, usually. So that Lloyd doesn't get any experience whatsoever. So that's why these guys are super ideal. Ideally, you fight one set of these in, like, glitchless runs. You fight one of them that kills Lloyd, and then you go straight up north all the way to the top of the mountain. Um, and it's a great time. And the ones fight that this guy did serve their exact purpose. Alright, so now i got old robots. These guys are kind of chill. Hypnosis doesn't work on them, apparently. Cause, probably because they're robots. Um, but they're on, the thresh they're on a weird threshold for level 9 and 10. If level 9 and 10 has low offense, then you encounter these guys a lot, even with a repel ring. But if level if you, your level 9 and 10 has a high offense, then you don't encounter them, so that's interesting. And in an exact situation that happens in the speedrun, wouldn't you know? But um, otherwise, these guys aren't that bad. They usually die pretty fast. You can kill them in three turns with like a level 1 Lloyd if you wanted to. They're not that bad. Level 1 Lloyd, level 9 and 10, it's not that bad. Oh, I don't mind them. Duncan's Factory, chill enemy. Where is his, who is his other friend, the Scrapper? I like the Scrapper, too. They're chill. Um, yeah, Omega Saucer. These guys are desert enemies, post-desert. They can be very annoying. They hit hard. But really, they're kind of just chill. Um, usually, they're just using Beam Alpha or Beam Gamma, and they're just, like, chill. They don't actually hit... They don't actually have a lot of HP, so that's kind of fine. Um, Polar Bear. I like these guys. But they can be very annoying, but I don't think they're super annoying. They're just average. Um, his chair was broken, and he is not happy. They can definitely be hard to kill with 180 defense. 
But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna throw him in super annoying. That's like a pretty high that's a pretty high defense. Nowhere near as high as his the normal bear. Alright, uh the zombie. I like the zombie, he's pretty chill. He doesn't hit hard. You can kill him at a really low level if you want twelve dollars instantly. And yeah, they're just an average um graveyard enemy. Not not bad, not bad. Alright, now we got the R7s. These guys are the definition of an auto scroller boss fight. I don't know if I even like this one you have to kill with a tank in the desert. This one always kills you, and then Lloyd saves you with the tank, and then this one Eve kills, and then this one blows up Eve. You just press auto and nothing happens. But interestingly, in the Famicom version, you can use the flea bag on these guys, and it really totally breaks the game when you do that. Uh, the game hits a 255 turn limit on their battle because it just stalls out infinitely and then you just break the game. So they're interesting enemies, but they're definitely auto-scrollers. Alright, Rave Yadette. These guys are chill when they're um, by their self, but if they spawn in to the left, then uh, that means they're going to be calling in a Sky Yadette. And that's super annoying. If you get a Sky Yadette at a low level, you're cooked. You're gonna be, you're gonna be taking big, big Nintendo damage, and you don't want that. But these guys are chill, especially by themselves. They die in two hits. They're really easy to kill or one shot. Normally, forty HP. Eddie Bear backwards. It's a classic. I like these guys. I do not like the Sky Yadettes though. Not a fan. Rattlesnakes. Not a fan. They poison you. They don't give a lot of experience. They don't give a lot of money. 128 defense, 100 HP. Pretty lame. They're definitely... They just really... They're a big poison enemy. Not cool. Meanwhile, the Red Snake. Super ideal. I love the Red Snake. They're basically this game's equivalent of the Metal Slime. And they're just... They're just so fun to kill. Um... They're hard to kill because they run away from you. They can drop the magic coin, but really the big thing is they give 500 experience if you kill one. And if you can like kill one in two turns, it's it, all you need is one turn of them not escaping and you two around it. That's such a high value for 500 experience. So we definitely love the red snakes out here. Uh, now we got the biopede, or this is just like a not a biopede. This is just a freaking scorpion. There he is, Scorpion. Pretty annoying poison enemy, desert poison enemy, but they have low HP. These are actually probably the most chill of the poison enemies, because, like, they actually, like, don't deal damage. Like, when they attack you, they, like, don't hurt. When these guys attack you, they hurt, or they, like, stone you and kill you. When the Rattlesnake attacks you, it hurts. But when these guys attack you, it's really not that bad. That's just my experience, anyways. Um, The Wingle Seagull... I'm not a big fan of the seagulls. Yes, that thief. They can steal your items. They hit hard. And I remember 90 defense is... Like, 90 HP isn't a lot, but 90 defense is a lot. And $44 is not a lot of money for 90 defense. So these guys are not... When you get into a 3 stack of these guys, I'm usually running. I don't like these guys. Alright, Crowdly. Also known as Blood Zombie. These guys are actually chill. They got nerfed. Um, they used to have a lot of blood all over their sprite. Apparently they have a last strike. I don't even know about that. But if that's the case, I'm putting them in super annoying. Because uh, $34 and 58 experience is not worth uh, risking a last strike. But usually I just run from these guys and I don't care. Alright, Silver Wolf. These guys are going to... I could put them with the Lone Wolf. They are very annoying when you have four of them. But really, when you have four of them and you're killing all of them, you're getting a lot of experience and it's really good. The lone, actually, you know, the lone wolf is very chill because he's by himself and he's lone. But like, he's very annoying to fight by himself. Alright, I think I'll leave them both in chill. They're very chill. The skunk is also chill and average. I like the skunk. Uh, doesn't hit hard. Low HP. Not a lot of money, but not really. Uh, he's... He's he's a non threat, so he's he's fine. He's he's just a threat when you're or he's just something to think about when you're fighting him with a lynx next to it. Alright, uh this the blue snake. 
Blue Snake, almost worthless, but I think it, this Blue Snake's fine. The Blue Snake at least gives you a little bit of money, and it can drop a Magic Herb, which is valuable. And 18 HP, you're usually one-shotting it. But it's a good enemy to fight early game. Um, Arachnid or Spider. These guys kind of chill. We I remember Godulus almost made an Arachnid route using Insecticide and Arachnid to kill these guys, to kill Spiders. But, um, yeah, I don't know. They're just kind of chill. They don't give a lot of money, but they also, I don't know. They, they like to call for help. They are kind of annoying. They are enemies that call for help and poison you. But, like, they're really not, I don't know. I never kill them. I always run from them. So I guess they are super annoying. Right, we got to zoom the tier list out again. Okay. All right. Next, we got the normal Starman. I like the normal Starman. Um, normal Starman. <clears throat> usually doesn't deal a lot of damage to you. And when it is using spells, it's using like beam. Not that bad. Still not predicting the whole tier list, but you can kind of see all this earlier at this point. Alright, um... Junior... I'm gonna put Starman Junior in Super Annoying, because he deserves it. He's the most annoying boss fight of all of them. He limits so much of the game. If you have to go all the way through the zoo and kill him to get to open up like the entire second half and majority of the game. And he can be really annoying. Using PK Beam Alpha is the worst thing he can do, which is just a straight 30 damage, and he has like five of those in the tank. So you want him to use PK Beam Gamma, because it wastes all of his PSI. Oh yeah, I meant to mention about the normal Starman. I like these guys a lot because they're super easy to kill, and they drop PSI stones, and they're just like... If you have Teddy, you're one-shotting these guys, so it's just... They, they look chill, they're like... They're like, I don't know, there's like default star man. They're super ideal. I like them. Junior is not ideal. He's super annoying. I hate Junior. Star Miner also goes in the ideal category because these are the bombs you can fight with Eve in your party that can drop super bombs. And super bombs are like the most, by far Lloyd's most powerful item and one of the most powerful items, uh, like battle items by far in the game because... A super bomb is just a PK fire omega, just automatically one shots every enemy in the battle. Uh, the drawback is that it does slight recoil to Lloyd, but that's like irrelevant. Alright, Stray Dog is pretty chill. I don't mind these guys. $10 for experience, basically no HP. Like snake level. You want to be fighting, if you're not fighting hippies or rednecks um, in the early game, then you want to be fighting a snake or a dog. You do not want to be fighting centipedes or crows. Centipedes and crows are the two things that are not ideal, not chill. But in the early game, you want the redneck, the hippie, the snake, the dog. The dog can drop a flea bag, which seems like a random item, but it can have some value in places you wouldn't see him. Against fights, you wouldn't think. Like against the elephant fight, flea bag destroys the elephant. Flea bag destroys. Uh, these bosses in a Famicom version, but the flea bag can just it just like it's the equivalent of giving the enemy asthma for Nintendo. Basically, it just destroys the enemy, just ruins their stats. All right, tarantula. There's like two spiders here. I don't really know about these guys. I don't know about the difference between tarantulas and arachnids, but we'll just put them all in super annoying because I'm assuming they call for help and I'm assuming poison, poison, poison. So yeah. All right, Tiger. I like the Tiger. Um, they are kind of annoying when they hit twice. But um, they're not the worst. They usually go down fast. 35 HP is not that bad. They're just like glass cannons. They're more glass cannons than the Crocodile is. 
The crocodile is like a 0.5 glass cannon compared to the tiger. The tiger is the real glass cannon. Um, but I I don't mind them. Next we got the Titanese and the Titan Titanian. I never know how to. One of the reason I like these guys so much is because I never know how to pronounce them. It's so it, the Titanese. I love these guys. I don't know why. They're just like little lobster land lobster dudes, and they're just like bing, 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 and they have like vertical mouths, and their like eyeballs are like also like not and part of their head it like doesn't and their tail is so long and they have like 10 legs like they have so many legs back there i love these guys i don't know why titanian uh these are unique in the aspect where they're only in mother one and mother three they are not in earthbound so these guys did not make it to america initially but they have high defense they can be really this guy's got 420 defense the, this is the one you can find on etoy and you can find this one in the desert, but I don't know why. I just like these guys. Mother 3, you can also get a Sky Titan, which is interesting. You can fight them. Um, but yeah, I, I like these guys. They use Hypnosis. That's It uses Hypnotism. Okay. But they're easy to run away from if you don't want to fight them. They're pretty ideal fights. They just have, they're just high defense. They have died as spells. All right, only a couple left. One of them is the Ulrich. The Ulrich is kind of just chill. Um, Ulriches are very... They, they usually use, like, Alpha, like, Thunder Alpha, and, like, all these, like, beginner-level spells and do, like, zero damage. They have a bunch of PP, and they have, they have more PP than HP, which is really interesting. They, what I was going to say, though, is that they don't have a lot of HP for how much EXP and money they drop. You can usually one or two shot them in Magic Ant Caves, and they give so much experience. So, uh, these guys are fine. They can be a threat to, like, level 1 Lloyd, but basically everything on this list is a threat to level 1 Lloyd. Alright, Ultra Barbot, uh, I like these guys. They're definitely chill in the same tier as Omega Saucers, because that's where they spawn with. Um, the Barbots, yeah, I don't know, they just, they're 80 HP, they can drop the Plasma Beam, which is good. They're easy to run from if you want to get away, if you want to run through the desert, but usually they're just going to hit you with an Alpha, PK Beam Alpha, usually they're going to hit you with a random spell. You can expect a solid 30 or 40 damage from them every turn, pretty chill. Alright, um, we already talked about Wally, the redneck, but this is, if you're not going to get a hippie, then you're going to want a redneck. Um, he can raise his temper, but he can also lower, like, raise his attack, but he can also, like, lower his own. He can raise it in tens. Gives you $20 for, uh, 20 HP, which is really good. And, uh, yeah, if you're not fighting a hippie, you want a redneck. Um, next we got the normal wolf. These guys are, uh, chill. They can be really annoying. But really, they're not that bad. They can be annoying in the aspect where they just kind of hit. You're not expecting them to. You, like, fight them outside of Magicant. They just, like, appear when you're not expecting them to, and you just can't escape for four turns, and you're taking all this wolf damage, and you're like, what the heck? But um, they're not that bad. And if you just actually decide to kill them, they're only 50 HP is not that bad at all. So the widow, the other brother of the tree, these guys suck. They they're not as bad, but they can like sow their seeds and plant more of them and they can like like I, I feel like they also blow up, but they might not blow up. I don't know. I think they're not as bad as the big one, but they're they're pretty annoying. I don't like to fight them, I like to run from them. Alright, and finally we have the normal zombie. Um I think we're gonna have to put him with his his lower level brother suedo zombie pseudo zombie not suedo <laughs> um yeah the normal zombies that was brain shock apparently worthless honestly gonna have to put him in worthless here nah he's fine uh i usually run away from them but if you want to kill them they're not that bad yeah this is looking like the tier list let me see if i can it out a little bit more. 
Alright. This is what the final tier list is looking like. Let me know what you guys think. Um, these are all my super ideal enemies. Basically, anytime um, I encounter one of these, I want to be fighting them for a specific reason. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, the normal swoosh isn't ideal. It's just like normal average. But yeah, all these guys, like, they're pretty ideal. I want them for some reason or another. Um, all these guys are average. I'll take these guys, but or they're not difficult to run away from. Um, it's not the end of the world to encounter them. I, I I really don't mind encountering these guys. All these guys are the super annoying ones. These are the guys I'm running away from turn one because they're so annoying to fight for one reason or another. Um, the chill might or the crow might be the only one that could go into chill, but when you're fighting the crow early, you or when you're in a really low level, you don't want to be fighting the crow. It is so lame. But like all these cars, the gang zombies, all the robots that blow up, these guys are not a fun time to be fighting. And then um we got the worthless section with the uh, biopedes and the rats. I think this biopede is probably super annoying. Um Let's see who 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 deserves to go into worthless. I don't know. Probably. No, I think we gotta throw the biopede. I hate the biopedes so much. They're so worthless to me. Uh, the fly is worthless. The only value the fly has in the rats. The only value any of these enemies will have. It's the fact that they act like a battle and they act like enemies and you can use a fly or a rat or the doll to manipulate RNG on a on like a super low basic enemy that's no, a non-threat, which is definitely the case in the zoo. The fly is utilized to manipulate RNG in the zoo. So, um, there is some value there, but casually when you're playing the game, there's no value to the fly. They're actually just worthless waste of time fight. And yeah, all the auto scroller boss fights. These guys. I think um the dragon could go into super annoying. But they're all really auto scrollers. The only there's the fish the fish, the dragon, and Geig are all like if you don't know what you're doing. They might not be an auto scroller. You could easily die to them. But if you know what you're doing, they're essentially auto scrollers, especially Geig and the dragon too. The dragon's usually a one turn, and this is always an auto scroller. The fish is definitely the most boss like boss of it of the game. All of these guys are auto scrollers too. All these robots and the doll, they're all auto scrollers. So, got us the fish as being the most boss like boss of this game. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I had a lot of fun making this. If you're bored and you enjoyed listening to me ramble about these enemies for the last hour, definitely let me know. And if you think some of these annoying enemies are awesome, then let me know. If you think some of these chill enemies are super annoying, let me know why. Because I'm definitely interested and I'm definitely down to debate. Respectfully, of course. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed my mindless rambling. Till next time.